Welcome to the Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Today is the day. As you may remember, two weeks ago, I made my first book. I went through the whole process of cutting the paper and binding them and putting some covers on them. And in general, it's serviceable. It is a book, albeit an ugly book currently because the covers don't have any like decoration or wrapping around it. But today we changed that because we're gonna be wrapping this thing in leather. Not only that, but I'm using this opportunity to add to my D&D &D book collection. If you've not been following, basically I've been making book covers that go along with each of the D&D &D classes. So, so far I've done a barbarian, a bard, and a cleric. See what I'm doing there? It's alphabetical order. Which means today we're hitting the druid class. And Middle Miss Red hit me with some of this artwork here that I am super excited to make a reality. So without much further ado, let's just jump into this and level up this skill creating the forms. All right, so to begin making that picture or reality, I need to make some sort of a form for the leather to fit around so that it has kind of that raised design in it. Now to do this, I'm gonna end up using some Super Sculpey polymer clay just because it's really easy to use and hardens right in the oven. But before I start shaping it, I need like a guide and a base to form it onto so I know what I'm doing. So to make this base, I busted out this piece of plywood. This will just give me a solid platform to work from. Just to make sure everything's gonna fall into place where I need it to, I place my book on top of that plywood and trace the outline of it right onto my board. I also made sure I traced in the spine just so I didn't go over on my designs. Now to make it easier to work with the clay so it doesn't get stuck into the grain of the wood, I placed some of this parchment paper over it and taped it into place so it didn't move around on me. Then I just started freehand drawing that design into place. Now you can always just print something to size and tape it into place, but honestly that was more work for me at this point and I feel pretty comfortable being able to draw everything in. I also made sure to incorporate where the cordage around the spine of my book goes, just because I thought it would be really cool to have like my designs warping around the spine and be what makes those things pop up. By the time I was drawing, I ended up with this cool looking kind of bear skull design on the front and ribs and a spine on the back. So now my book will have two spines. Yeah, that's why people keep coming back for all the book humor. All right, at this point, we're ready to bust out our Super Sculpey and start making this thing. All I really do to rough in this shape is make these little sausages out of the Sculpey and lay them where they're gonna go on the design. Then I go back and start connecting those little sausages together with my fingers, blending and kneading the edges until they're smooth. Now remember, leather is gonna be covering this, so I want the details to be large. Anything really fine is just gonna get lost later on. Also, this is for a druid. I want this to look kind of primitive and rough. For the spine, I just made a larger kind of sausage and then used a clay tool just to push in every space that would be in between the vertebra. Then I just went back in and pinched and shaped it a little bit with my fingers so it looked more like bone. Next, I rolled out some thinner clay and laid those in place to become my ribs. These again, I just kind of flattened and pinched until I liked the shape. Once everything was put together, it was honestly really cool for just kind of roughing it out into clay. I was digging how that was gonna look. All right, so happy with that, it's time to put it in the oven at 275 degrees for about an hour. Now, I'm putting the whole piece of plywood in my oven because I didn't really have any like pans or trays that were big enough to do this design without it warping on me. That being said, plywood is made up of layers of glue and I didn't know if like heating it up would put a lot of fumes in the air. So if you're gonna try this, either put it on a tray or do what I did and just have like every window and slider in the house open. In case you're wondering though, it just kind of smelt like warm wood. It wasn't anything, it was actually kind of nice. And when I was done, I had these awesome little forms that I can use for my leather. Sure, some of the thinner parts end up cracking, but that's all right. I'm just gonna end up gluing these to the cover anyway. So now that we got those all set and looking sexy, we can move on to forming the leather. All right, the time has finally come for us to actually bust out our leather. Now for this project, I got this super thin, like one ounce veg tan leather. We want it to be super thin so we can get as much detail as possible once we put it over our form. So I start by laying down my book onto the leather and marking it out larger than I need it. Remember, this will wrap around the book and then it's also gonna be kind of pushed and formed into the shape and I just didn't want it to be too small. So once it's all cut out, I just make sure it'll wrap around the book and everything's gonna fit okay. Then making sure the book is centered, I mark where the spine falls onto the leather. I want to start by shaping that spine and locking it into place because then it's going to fall correctly everywhere else. So to do this, I began by wetting my leather right where that spine lays. While that soaks in, I locked my book in the book press standing up straight. Then I went ahead and brushed in a generous amount of PVA glue, making sure it covered the entire spine. 
Okay, here comes the fun bit. From here, I carefully draped the leather over the spine and began shaping in those rope bindings with my bone folder. And because the leather is so wet, it takes the shape really easily. Even so, using the bone folder doesn't make the shape stay really crisp. It just kind of gets the general outline there. To really make it pop, I grab some string and I wrap it around the entire book press and line it up with those bindings, tying them tightly. By doing this and leaving it until the leather dries, the imprint from those strings are gonna really highlight those bindings. And once it was dry, I just cut those away with the scissors and look at how defined that is. That came out, wow, perfect. Exactly what I was looking for. All right, so with the spine locked into place and looking, looking great if I do say so myself, it's time to start embossing those forms we made into our leather covers. First though, I hit those forms with some polyurethane sealer just because I didn't know how they'd react to the wetness of the leather and the glue we're gonna use. Now to adhere those forms to the covers, I put them in place where I thought they'd fit nicely and then traced around them with a pencil so I know where to add adhesive. Now for adhesive, I'm using the tried and true barge cement. After adding some to the clay forms and to the covers, I carefully pressed them together for an instant bond. And again, it's okay that these broke up into some pieces because they're just being glued back on right into shape. With those in place, I went ahead and wet down my leather to get it ready to start shaping. And I made sure that it was wet enough so the liquid penetrated all the way through both sides, but not so much that the leather turns gummy because then you actually run the risk of damaging the leather as you're trying to shape it. So with my leather nice and moist, I draped it over my spine cover here and started shaping it with the bone folder and my fingers. And this is actually really easy to do. The leather takes the shape really well once it's wet. That being said, it wasn't taking up a lot of detail. Like it looked good. And if it stayed just like that, I'd be happy with it. But I just, I kind of wish that more of the little crevices and stuff would show up a little bit more clearly. Now to actually adhere it to the cover, all I had to do was apply a generous amount of PVA glue making sure to spread it across the entire cover evenly and add some to the leather as well. Now, normally I'd either say like kind of turn it onto that face or lay some stuff on top of it so that the glue will adhere well. But I, I had an idea I wanted to dry. So I just so happen to have a whole bunch of this acoustic foam lying around. So using that, I laid my book into the book press and added a bunch of layers of that acoustic foam on top. Then I just tightened that sucker down as far as I could. The thought here being that that foam is gonna settle around all the little crevices and nooks in my form and really push the leather in. And when I took it out, I was amazed at what a good job this did. Look at all those details, it's perfect. Like I hoped that would work and I figured at the very least it would help it stay in contact for the glue to dry, but it was able to emboss so clearly, I'm, I'm ecstatic with that new little technique I've learned. Not only that, but it gives us another use for our book press. This thing's like an embosser, it's perfect. So buoyed by that success, I just followed suit with the front cover, carefully gluing it down into place right where I wanted it, then wetting my leather, shaping and forming everything with my fingers and the bone folder, trying to lock in as many of those details with my hands first before I use my little trick here. Finally, I added copious amounts of glue and it was off to the book press. And again, I am gonna harp on this often because that, yeah, one of these things right here. That trick works perfectly. I've never been able to get that kind of detail while I was shaping leather. Might be an old trick to some of you, but this is new to me. I'm super excited about that. All right, we have our leather shaped. We have it attached to the book. It's time for finishing touches. All right, to start rounding this thing out, it's time to add some color to it. For my overall color, I'm adding a light brown with a dauber. This just has a nice rustic feeling and the dauber really helped me get it into all the deeper points. Now this color looks good, but I was afraid that it was gonna be a little bit flat. I really want those deeper parts to kind of sink in a little bit more and everything to have a little bit more volume to it. To make this happen, I added some dark brown to my airbrush gun. And just an FYI, if you are airbrushing the dyes, it helps to use a dye reducer. I myself just use like a 50-50 mix and it stops my gun from clogging up. It took me a while to figure that out and I, I went through a couple of guns. I'm not good with those things. Anyways, using this darker shade, I was able to deepen the shadows and the eye sockets and the ridges and the general outline of this whole face. And doing this really makes it pop. I liked it so much, I continued onto the spine and, and the spine. Again, this book has two spines. But you get what I'm saying. I, I added the shadow to the rest of the book. 
All right, from here, it's still really messy because those edges are just kind of long and flying off everywhere. But before I wrap them around and kind of tuck them into place, I just go in and cut off some of the excess to keep it neat. Now, because I am gonna be folding that leather around the cover, I needed to make a little cut right before it goes around the spine. This is just gonna make it so it can freely bend around the cover. I also nipped a little wedge shape around the corner so that they would fold cleanly together. Then to lock it in place, I just added some barge cement to the cover and the underside of the leather, and then folded and pressed it into position, making sure that it was straight as it could be and nice and tight to that corner. And once those were all locked in, I just nipped off the tab that was left over around the spine. And this immediately cleans it up and makes it look like a book. That's definitely one of those things in a project that once you do it, it's like a giant leap towards being done. Like that's a book already, that looks great. That being said, the inside of the cover is still messy. You can kind of see where the leather is overlapping each other and you see the ropes from the binding earlier. To hide that, I just spread a bunch of glue on the inside of the cover and also on the top end page. Once this was done on both sides, it was back to the book press just to hold everything together while it cures. And now it is a book. It is 100% a book. Look at how good that looks once those end pages are locked in. It hides all the mess and it makes it look, it's a, it's a book. I'm sorry, it's the simple things. I know we're setting out to make a book and my end product should look like a book, but I still get endlessly entertained when I do a thing and it turns out right. Anyways, it looks good and we wanna keep it looking good. So I go ahead and I add a coat of Rosalyn to it just to make sure that it's sealed and protected. It also adds a nice little shine to the whole thing too. Now, this is supposed to be a book from a druid. So I wanted to add another kind of natural element to it to make it look like it's kind of been like moldering under a tree in the woods somewhere. To achieve this, I bought some of this imitation moss that is made by army painters. This is the kind of stuff you use if you're making like a D&D model or a miniature. And to apply it could not be easier. All I did was lay down some PVA glue and then pressed a bunch of moss into place. After giving it a few seconds to turn tacky, I simply brushed the excess away. And that's it, I just went around painting on glue wherever I thought the moss would look good and then sticking it into place. And it does look good. That is a cool effect right there. All right, for the last finishing touch of this thing, I wanted to add a little extra protection and, and, and bling to the corners. To do so, I added these little corner guards for books off of Amazon. All you do is slide them into place and then tap them with a hammer to crimp them down. And check this thing out. It is so sick. So first and foremost, I couldn't be happier with how the shaping turned out. That little trick with the foam and the book press, ah oh man, I'm so happy that worked, how it worked out. But even without that, like the coloring, the way the leather wraps around it, I, I'm honestly really proud of this project. Like book binding for a while was one of those things I didn't approach because I, it looked really complicated from the outside. It, isn't. It is a fun, relaxing thing to get into, and I, I couldn't recommend you try it more. It is so cool to do. And look at this thing! It's, it's great. I'm happy with this. Now, if you are happy with this project, or at least mildly entertained at my shenanigans, why don't you give me some of that thumbs up, love, and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. And if you like what I do here and the projects that I make, then I highly recommend you check out the Discord channel. I am probably the least talented of the people who are on there. Check out some of these projects. Every single day, these people are on here showing off how talented they are, sharing their projects, chatting about new ones, and honestly, just kind of what's going on with their daily life. You get perspectives from around the world, all different people, and all of them are crafty and amazing. So yeah, big shout out to my Discord people. And just thank you for being you. You guys are awesome. Also a big shout out to my Patreon members. Without you, this doesn't happen. I can't, I can't afford to do this. So the only way we're able to grow is because of your generous contribution. So I, I really think, I couldn't be more appreciative of what you do for this channel. If you like what I do here and would like to see the channel grow, why don't you consider joining the Patreon? Link in the description below. That kind of rhymed. I was all right with that. All right, finally, if there's a project you're dying to see me cover on the show, why don't you leave it in the comment section and I will add it to the list. All right, well, I should get going. I have a dream where I'm gonna turn this into like a, a Voynich manuscript and just leave it in a library somewhere for someone to find. Building a legend here. In the meantime, though, 
keep leveling up, you.